Okay, take two. I have to do this video over because I plugged my microphone into the earphones. Okay, so we were talking about the solar system. Here, let's go back here because I forgot to note, it, note this. Now look at this. It's interesting how planets are. This is our solar system. This is how far Earth is from the Sun and the Mars is from the Sun compared to the size of the Sun when it's a red giant. Okay, so the Earth and Mars actually will be well, the Earth, anyways, will be about the about right where the edge of the red giant is when the sun's a red giant, and Mars will be burnt up. So, but look, this is the sun. This is the coronal zone of the sun, and then you have, um, I guess, another zone, and then you have Mercury, and then another level out, you have Venus, and then you have Earth. And then, and then about double of what Earth is from the sun, you have Mars. And um, the ecliptic plane, I don't know what that is, but oh yeah, this is the ecliptic plane. So Mars is about double as far out as the Earth, right? And EU is about the distance from the sun to the Earth. And then double of what the Mars is, is the asteroid field, which used to be a planet. And then the double of that from the sun is Jupiter. Double of that is Saturn. The double of that is Uranus. And... Um, and it's it, that's the golden mean spiral. If you have the, here's the center, and then the spiral goes around to here, the spiral goes around again. It's going to be double of from what the last time it went around. And when it goes around again, it'll be double from the, what the last time it went out of, of, from before that. It's called a quadratic um, growth, gro growing quadratically, I think. Um, and that is how um, everything in uh, nature actually grows. Uh, if you look at um, um, pl uh, flowers, daisy flowers, other flowers, pine cones, uh, galaxies growing out shells, um, it all follows the golden mean spiral. And um, even how energy comes into the earth is um, shown by the placements of different megaliths and such. So anyways, that is how our planets are revolving around the sun. So they follow like a groove, kind of like how the needle of a record goes into the groove of the record around and around. It's not just by accident that those planets are there. They're following a certain magnetic line. And you know, that's how they formed and they fell into place. So uh, we're not taught that. And I don't even know if modern day astronomers even think about that. But that's interesting. So anyways, let's go down. So Cephei, ten, 10 times smaller. There's Cephei, 10 times smaller. Antares, 10 times smaller. Betelgeuse, here's the solar system, 10 times smaller. Now, here's the heliosphere. Our solar system is a three-dimensional solar system. Here's the ecliptic plane of our solar system. We have a halo going around it, and then another halo around that, represented by asteroid belts going around, little, little asteroids. And then we have another halo here, and then another halo here, represented by different uh, valency shells of, I don't know, some kind of energy. I don't know much about it, but we are in a three-dimensional solar system. So, you know, that represents the hyperdimensional quality of our solar system, so we're considering the concept of hyperdimensionality. So there's the planetaria nebula M29. It's about as big as the largest star, VV Cephei. We actually discovered another star bigger than that recently, a couple of weeks ago. But here's a central star in the planetary nebula NGC 7027. A lot bigger than planetary nebula M29. So let's go 10 times smaller. Um, there's that Antares, or VV Cephei, largest star we know of. It's just a dot here next to our solar system. Here's our solar system. And here's the Boomerang Nebula. That's a big nebula. Um, and then 10 times bigger, 10 trillion kilometers now. One light year is 9,461,000,000,000 kilometers. And it's four light years to the nearest star. So, you know, there's the largest star that we know of. That 10 times smaller and then times four is how far it is from one star to the next. But our star is one power of 10, two powers of 10, three powers of 10, um, four powers of 10 up is our sun. So that's the little dot, 10 times smaller, 10 times smaller, 10 times smaller, yet 10 times smaller, four times, you've got one light year and then that times four. So, you know, our sun, if it was a grain of sand, I think it'd be like 20 kilometers away to the next star. 
um, Alpha and Proxima Centauri, the binary stars, which I heard were the purple-skinned um, aliens come from, ruled by the sexy women. So, um, 10 trillion kilometers where we are now. It's a 10 followed by uh, 12 zeros, 14 zeros. Now here is uh, the Boomerang Nebula, 10 times smaller. Boomerang Nebula, Boomerang Nebula. Here's the Planetary Nebula IC418. Planetary Nebula NGC 7027. Eskimo Nebula. So nebulas get big. Um, Eskimo Nebula down here. Ring Nebula, Boomerang Nebula. Now here's the sun to the nearest star, if you want to compare it. Uh, it's about as big as, say, the sun to the nearest star is about up, up one of the arms of the Pillars of Hercules, or Pillars of Creation. Remember the Pillars, pillars of the Creation and the e Eagle Nebula? This is the poster that Captain Kirk had in his main bridge area in the uh, Enterprise. Uh, Planetary Helix Nebula here. Um, so as you can see, the sun, or their solar system even, is just tiny. Here's a light year, by the way. So it's like four or five light years across, just down the pillar. So, you know, our sun is tiny inside of that. Now 10 quadrillion kilometers. Cat's Eye Nebula, Orion Nebula is there, Eagle Nebula. Um, hmm? All right, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to look at that again here. Okay, here's the sun to the Pleiades, 146 light years. Cat's Eye Nebula, or maybe we're talking, no, I'm sorry, 146 um, kilometers, trillion kilometers, quadrillion kilometers. I should, I should have written it. Anyways, here's uh, another one which I can't remember because I didn't have it labeled. I'll fix that. And then this. And then we'll go 100 kil quadrillion kilometers. This is the Sagittarius Dwarf Elliptical Galaxy. It's our nearest galaxy. It's a dwarf galaxy. The largest, the closest, you know, regular sized galaxy is Andromeda. And this is, you know, that other gal nebula, Cat's Eye Nebula, 10 times smaller. So now let's go to 1 quadrillion kilometers. Here's the sun to Arcturus distance. Bonk, bonk. Here's the size of the Pleiades, Crab Nebula. Here is the Eagle Nebula. It's 280 billion kilometers. 281 billion kilometers. Now here is the arm, remember? The Pillars of Hercules. One power of 10, two powers of 10, three powers of 10 up, boom. So that doesn't make sense, but I'll figure it out later. Pillars of Hercules in the Eagle Nebula, and here's the Eagle Nebula. Pillars of Hercules inside. Orion Nebula, sun to the nearest star from here to here. And here's our solar system, or here's our, our galactic system. Here's the sun, here's the nearest star, right? Because you have the sun to the nearest star. Alpha and Proxima Centauri, and then over here we've got like Sirius, over here Betelgeuse, you know, Antares, Betelgeuse, or something. You can click on the picture and it'll make it large and you can see exactly which the map of it. So here's one quintillion kilometers. And here is our galaxy. It's about a quintillion kilometers across. Or one with 15 zeros after it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. 18 zeros after it um, in kilometers. And there's the sun. So it's about two-thirds of the way out from the center of the galaxy on, like, the third arm. You know, we have, like, or in between two arms, I guess. So we have two arms after us and two arms before us, kind of halfway out. Okay, 10 quintillion kilometers. Here's our galaxy. Here's the Andromeda galaxy. It's our galaxy compared to the size of the Andromeda galaxy. And here's the Sombrero galaxy, about the size of the Milky Way galaxy. 10 times smaller, it's a little dot, the, the Milky Way and the Andromeda. Now, this is the size of the Milky Way and Andromeda galaxy. Um, how, how big they are compared to how far apart they are. So it's about similar as, say, the moon to the Earth, sort of. The moon's a lot farther out, but it's kind of within the ballpark. It's nowhere near the distances of stars from each other. But I think the uh, that little um, dwarf galaxy is about is about here. I'm not so sure, but it's something like that. So here's the giant elliptical galaxy IC11 in the center of the supercluster that we're in, compared to how big it is. So it's like here's a supercluster, here are our galaxies. So like here's a galaxy, and then here's our closest galaxy, right? But this is taken from a long ways away, so this is actually farther apart than this. But so, but that's how big galaxies are compared to each other is how far apart they are. So now we're going to 1 sextillion kilometers, one t 10 times even farther out. Here's a supercluster, um, or the central galaxy inside of a supercluster, because this galaxy is way bigger than these galaxies, as you can see. 
and then that other uh, galaxy is smaller. So let's go 10 times smaller. Those are just little dots. Here's our supercluster. Our supercluster 10 times smaller is this guy here. Here's the superclusters that we know of. So here's like our supercluster and other superclusters. So there's galaxies that cluster together. And here's the universe, the entire universe. Um, obviously not a picture of it, but that's as big as the universe is. So we know the supercluster is about this big. And then the outer edges of the universe is about this big. Now this picture, by the way, I think you can click in and it'll open it in a larger size on my Flickr page, is the Hubble. It's if you hold a needle point um, arm's length away from your eye, the size of that needle point is the field of vision of this picture, and each one of these pictures is a galaxy. So that's how many <laughs> galaxies there are. <laughs> you know, add how many needle points you can you can attach to this. You know, the size of the entire sky, and this is how many galaxies you get. And then you know how big a galaxy is compared to uh, everything else just by looking at this site. So maybe I'll do it next time and go from the big all the way down and it'll have a different effect so anyways one thing worth noting is you know the, the highest farthest point out is 26 it's it's 26 um, powers out and we are zero and we can go down negative 18 positive positive 26 all the way to negative 18. So us being at zero is we're right in the center. We're like an a, a, a uh, electron to us is us to the universe. The universe is to, to us is us to an electron. So it's kind of interesting to think about. And if you wanted to compare it, you know, with a, a computer with a larger screen, you could say, well, what is the relationship negative eight which is the buckyball and the DNA to positive eight. You know, we are to DNA what who is to us. Well, what the earth is to us. We are to DNA what the earth is to us. You know, or we could do it again. Let's do negative 10. We are to an atom what, what a star what the sun is to us. We are to an atom what a star is to us. How about negative three? We are to the largest brain cell or nanotechnology or the pulmonary alveola is, we are to a brain cell is to what um, a building is to us. Wow, interesting. Let's see, let's do another one. How about five, how about seven? How about five? We are to a red blood cell what Kawaii is to us. Oh. So anyways, you can play the, play with that with all of them. Maybe I should have done it with all of them individually, huh? We are to a quarter what a elephant is to us. Uh huh. I guess, more or less. We are to a gold nucleus, a uranium nucleus, to what a solar system is to us. Uh huh. Interesting. We are to a negative six. We are to a herpes virus, or the smallest of bacterias are, to what Colorado is to us. Wow. So anyways, uh, one cool thing about this is you can print it up. You just hit print, and this is all one page, so it just chick, 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 chick. and it's the same exact size as a page. It fits perfectly as a page. So you can just cut them with each power of 10 and put them across. And they can go across a, um, a, a hallway of any school, because schools have a plethora of hallways, your house. And you can just walk across it and you know, look at it and marvel at it and stuff. And that's a cool thing to look at. So that's that. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day.